Welcome. You've tuned in to Living the Miracle with hosts Michael and Raphael Tamura. You are meant to live a joy-filled life, and you most certainly can. In this program, you will learn simple yet powerful psychic tools to help you fulfill your soul's purpose in this world. Now, here are your hosts, Michael Tamura and Raphael Tamura. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Living the Miracle with Michael and Raphael Tamura. I'm Raphael. And I'm Michael. The purpose for our show is to awaken souls, develop intuition, and fulfill purpose. Our show today is about your psychic life and your creative life. What are they and how does one successfully live both? If you're joining us today, you are most likely aware that you are psychic, just as everyone is. Of course, a good majority of humanity still probably assumes that being psychic refers to just a small part of the population and not themselves. Many people may believe that being psychic is a rare gift, but there's also probably a good number of people who still believe that it's an abnormal condition, a curse, or even a mental illness. Some people even insist that if you are psychic, you must be the spawn of the devil. All righty then. (laughs) Well, everyone can believe what they wish to believe. One of the reasons we offer our weekly show is to remind as many people as possible that they don't have to become beholden to what others may believe. To do that, you have to have your own certainty as to what is true and what is not true for yourself. That certainly cannot come from any beliefs. If you can only come from your direct it, it can only come from your direct experience of the truth that is already within you. You might not be able to explain the whys and wherefores of the truth you know within you to anyone else, but fortunately you never have to defend yourself to you. You just have to know intuitively what's true for you. Keep that as your inner inner compass for living your life. Once a soul is ready to embark upon its greatest adventure inward to the limitless, that soul begins to let go of its dependence on others' beliefs to discover its own certainty of experience and the wisdom that comes from experiencing life directly. If you've followed the extraordinary journeys of the first four civilian astronauts to ever orbit the Earth for three days aboard Inspiration4, You can tell that each one of them, even though they were being blasted off into the beginning of outer space, they had to dig deep within their inner space to find the courage and certainty in their own truth to commit to such an undertaking. Not one of them could afford to fall prey to the other's beliefs and the fears those beliefs may elicit. Now they are written into history by living their inner miracle. Living by your inner truth is essential to living your psychic life, since your psychic life is the life you are living as the immortal soul that you are, whether you are aware of it or not. Being true to your psychic self is living true to yourself. To do that, you need to live by your direct intuitive knowing and all of your other psychic abilities. In fact, a major part of the massive global awakening and transformation we are all going through now is about stepping up our energy and awareness to collectively become a spirit-based intuitive race from having long been a body-based intellectual race. All of you who have been interested in being more spiritually aware and developing your various psychic abilities to further your spiritual growth have been leading the way for the rest of humanity to move in that direction. Of course, there's been a much greater number of people around the world who have put their primary focus on advancing us all scientifically, technologically, politically, artistically, culturally, and in many other ways, because all of that is part of our awakening and transforming process at this time as well. It doesn't do much good if people just focused on healing 
one organ or system in their body to the exclusion of the rest of their body. And the body of humanity is the same way. We could develop the greatest technology, find a cure for one life-threatening illness, or pioneer a much more sustainable form of government, but without awakening to the source and purpose of life as well, none of those great accomplishments will bring us lasting happiness or freedom. So, over the course of countless lifetimes on Earth, there have always been a small portion of the global humanity who have dedicated their incarnations to help bring about requisite step up in the collective spiritual awareness of humanity, often called spiritual healers, seekers, light workers, teachers, psychics, mediums, mystics, and or saints. These souls incarnate in all races, genders, nationalities, religions, and lifestyles to do their part in every arena of human life. Some become well-known, while most remain out of the public eye. Most live a modest lifestyle, while some live in the lap of luxury, and others in abject poverty. Some are the pictures of health, whereas others seem to be constantly ill or struggling with their health. Here, in seeing who is who, We certainly can never judge the book by its cover or the soul by the outward appearance or behavior of its body personality. As Shakespeare so wisely tells us in As You Like It, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. And I think he also said something about we all play different parts too. We are here to learn what we each need to learn as immortal souls that we may awaken to the truth of who we are and gain our ultimate freedom. To do that, we require many and varied life experiences over scores of incarnations. When you live more of your psychic life, since it is within you, the soul or spiritual being where your creativity resides, you necessarily begin to express more and more of your innate creativity. If you don't, you begin to suffer a kind of psychic pain of not having the freedom and space to creatively express who you are. Most often at first, people tend to mistake the experience of that pain as physical pain in the body. Yet nothing you can do to the body will relieve you from that kind of pain for more than a brief respite at best. So when you begin to develop yourself on a psychic level, You have to take better care of your creative self and life. That's part of why so many mystics who have lived a more secluded life tended to creatively express themselves in poetry or music or writing. Those who lived large in the world may have opted to express themselves in their awakening through creating large institutions like hospitals, schools, orphanages, and varieties of businesses to serve others. Once again, each soul has to creatively express their own awareness and experience in their own way. The bottom line, however, is that each awakening soul has to creatively express who they are in some way. Yep. And as Raphael said, the more you live your psychic life, the more... You have to attend to your creative expression. Now, the converse of that is also true. The more you live your creative life, the more you would have to take care of your psychic life. There are many highly creative souls incarnated in the world at any given era. Currently, the amount and quality of creativity being expressed on Earth by humans is unprecedented. Truly. You can't click on to YouTube or TikTok (laughs) (laughs) without without seeing some three-year-old musical prodigy or a 95-year-old master artist or a 22-year-old established superstar. But creative expression isn't limited by any means to the traditional art arena. Every day, we are witness to the extraordinary creative output of athletes, entertainers, and other performers. We behold 
heretofore unimaginable breakthroughs and accomplishments in of business entrepreneurs, technologically technological visionaries, and scientific pioneers. Many have brought together the arts, sciences, and technology to manifest their dreams. Some have used their creative political means to bring forth large-scale benefits in their areas of expertise. Just as an astronaut gets to see and experience from outer space a peaceful and beautiful world, free from political borders, wars, and justifications for dividing and conquering one another, the soul who begins to live the life of spirit, undivided, whole, and limitless, sees and experiences a different kind of world from the vastness and truth of their inner space. This is why creatively expressive people will sooner or later begin to naturally collaborate with many others as a whole undivided community. Of course, to be able to do that, each soul has to find a way to communicate clearly and work in harmony with others, regardless of personality and other differences. Many a highly creative artists, for example, have struggled with that part as they were required to move from following the dictates of their egos in vain attempts to protect their highly sensitive, aware, and powerful psychic inner self from perceived insults and injuries and move on to opening up to their own compassionate and aware, undivided inner spirit. It doesn't matter where you begin by living more of your psychic life or by living more of your creative life. Sooner or later, you have to bring the two seemingly separate and distinct lives into one whole and eternal life that you live. You have to move on from living by either or choices to living by a more inclusive both and choices. That's an example well, an example of both and choice would be that a person can be both limitless, undivided spirit and appear to have made many mistakes in living their personal lives. When you can have both and choices, you begin to truly be able to forgive. If you stay with either or choices, you can't see the undividedness of truth, so you won't forgive. And if you don't forgive what you're holding on to in your past, you can't really create something new in the present. Learn, heal, and move on. Letting go of the pain, guilt, fear, blame, and judgments in the memories of your experiences in your past is essential to live both your psychic life and your creative life. In fact, forgiv forgiveness is what ultimately dissolves any division you may find between the two. Which of the two lives have you paid more attention and given more care to? your psychic life, or your creative life. Well, many years ago, one of my advanced students came to me seeking some clairvoyant guidance after she was a practicing professional clairvoyant reader, healer, and teacher in her own right. Yet her main question was about her artwork. She was an exceptionally talented artist who had devoted her time growing up to her pursuit of art. She even had a master's of fine arts degree from a top university known for its fine arts programs. But her struggle was that she was still a not so quite starving, <laughs> but definitely struggling artist. She knew her artwork was not only highly saleable, but regularly praised by artists and other experts. Many people told her, they love various of her paintings, but at that point, she didn't have a single sale to her name. Meanwhile, artwork 
that was not even close in quality and beauty to her work was selling steadily all over the world. She wanted to know what was blocking her artistic success. I first asked her about her psychic life and practice. And she told me she loved her psychic life and practice, but she felt that art came first, so it's taken a bit of a backseat to her artwork. I told her that as talented as she was as an artist and as exceptional as her artwork was, her true path was as a clairvoyant healer, teacher, and guide. She didn't take care of and live her psychic life enough. If she would do that, her creative life as an artist wouldn't suffer so much. Some souls are meant to be artists first, who are also quite psychic. Other souls, like her, were meant to live a life as their psychic self, who happen to be extremely gifted artists as well. They were to use their artistic talents to express their psychic selves in lives. I told her that if she lived and practiced more of her psychic life, her artwork would take off. Well, lo and behold, she heard me loud and clear, immediately went to work on living her psychic life and practicing her psychic practices. And she decided that since her top interests in life were art and helping other women through their growth challenges, she could teach a series of workshops in New York for women artists seeking to learn psychic tools for meditation and healing. And that's a pretty specific demographic. Mm -hmm. So she moved to New York City, rented a small studio to live and work in, printed up some flyers, and well, obviously this was way before the internet days, <laughs> and posted them wherever she went. Well, she was pleasantly surprised that 20 women artists signed up eager to take her workshop. When they all arrived at her studio, they ranged in age from 17-year-old talented, budding, but struggling artist to a woman who first appeared to her to be an immaculately dressed and coiffed 72-year-old professional businesswoman. She was delighted to teach such a diverse mix of all women characters. She finished her psychic workshop for women artists to resounding applause. After everyone else left her studio, the 72-year-old woman stayed behind and asked if she could talk with her briefly. And the woman asked if any of the original paintings that adorned her small studio were her own work. When she told the woman that every piece was her original work, the woman said, I knew it. You didn't say in your introduction, but I knew you, too, were an artist. And she goes, continues, of course, I've been a lifelong artist and I've succeeded enormously to where I've supported myself by owning three major art galleries, one right here in New York City, one in Miami, and one in San Francisco. Of course, my first love is still painting, and I will continue that as long as I, I can. There's more to this story, but our first break is here right now, and we'd like to welcome you to join us for our special remote Zoom, Zoom retreat seminar, especially for our German and or English-speaking friends and students in Switzerland, Germany, and elsewhere. From Sunday, October 9th through Monday, oh, sorry, from Saturday, October 9th through Monday, October 11th, Michael will teach The Path of Awakening your compassion, clairvoyance, and creative expression, an extraordinary in-depth and comprehensive remote retreat seminar. Michael will teach in English with immediate translation into German. Organized and hosted by our good friends Wolfgang and Marianne Jaeger of Imlicht in Zurich, this retreat seminar will be online or phone via Zoom globally. So the schedule for the events will be different for different time zones, of course. For those of you in Switzerland or Central European time zone, the Saturday and Sunday seminar se se sessions will be from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. or 14 to 21 UR. 
Central European time with the two 20-minute and one 60-minute breaks, and the Monday evening session will be from 7 to 9 p.m. or 19 to 21 UR. Find out all the details and sign up online at the Forum in Imlicht website at www.imlicht.ch or contact Wolfgang Jaeger in English or German at forum at imlicht.ch. You can also go to our website, michaeltamora.com, for details in English along with contact information for the event organizer. We will return in just a couple of minutes to continue your psychic life and your creative life. We'll be right back. Become our friend on Facebook. Post your thoughts about our shows and network on our timeline. Visit Facebook.com forward slash Voice America. If you love living the miracle with Michael and Raphael Tamora, you'll love their teleclasses, seminars, and retreats. Check out their upcoming events at MichaelTamora.com forward slash events. The best book ever. Transformational. Incredible information. One of the best books I've ever read. Inspirational. A must read for anyone interested in accomplishing their purpose. That's what readers around the world are saying about You Are the Answer. The award winning book by Michael J. Tomorrow, beloved spiritual teacher and clairvoyant visionary. Order your copy now at Amazon.com. Living the Miracle with Michael and Raphael Tamura. Find out more about everything that they offer at michaeltamura.com. And be sure to sign up for their free monthly newsletter. It's your world. Motivate. Change. Succeed. VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com. You are listening to Living the Miracle. Michael and Raphael would love to hear from you. Reach the show today by calling 1-888-346-9141. Again, that's 1-888-346-9141. You may also send an email to livingthemiracleradio at gmail.com. Now back to Living the Miracle. Welcome back, everyone. We've been exploring what your psychic life is and what your creative life is and why you have to live both at the same time. It's not like living the double life of a comic book superhero. It's about living single, whole life of a human being, the single whole life of a human being. So let's go further. Michael is talking, telling a wonderful story about a woman artist, so I'm going to Turn it back over to him to finish that story. Yeah, uh, hang on a second. I, um, I have to put on my cape, red cape, and and change my costume oh, to the you're superhero. superhero. <laughs> yeah. Halloween is coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> <Probably her. laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. Wave. What, one of the first ones, of course, was Superman, right? And 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 he was what Clark Kent by day, a, a re- newspaper reporter, and then. The Superman by, well, by urgency, by call. <laughs> <laughs> we all have a little bit of that in us, though. Yes. But see, now it's really difficult with, with you know, everybody has little <laughs> smartphones, uh, so there's no phone booths. Where does Superman, where does Clark Kent go to change his costume? He has to put his invisibility <laughs> cloak, cloak on, right? We have to update our superheroes. Okay, anyway, before the before the break, I was telling him a story about one of my advanced students who, who was way back when trying to set, up, set out as, as an artist and, and really terrific. And she spent her whole life, you know, developing her art, artistry, but no matter what she did, she couldn't seem to sell her artwork. I mean, I've seen her artwork. It was just fabulous. Everybody loved it, but nobody pulled out their checkbook. <laughs> Until she, she, when I, she asked me what was going on, and I, I mentioned that, okay, she's, uh, she's to be have her psychic life and her psychic practices first. That's her primary foundation, <laughs> 
And because she was such a talented and trained artist, she could use that to support and, and enhance and express her psychic life and, and what she's here to do as a soul. And uh, she, she just heard that right away and she lock, stock and marrow, moved to New York City, got a studio apartment and did this workshop for uh, women artists, psychic tools, meditation workshop for women artists. And it was a big hit. There's, you know, first time there was about 20 people, 20 women. And one of those women, about a 72-year-old, uh, a very uh, established type of a woman, s stayed behind after everybody else left the class, very happy with the whole thing that she taught. And this woman introduces herself as the gal she, as a uh, successful artist in, in her own right and and uh, so successful that she now owns three prominent uh, galleries, art galleries in three big cities, San Francisco, New York, and Miami. And she gives her her card and she, she just says, I loved your workshop and I can tell that you're an exceptional psychic and a teacher, but how is your artwork selling? And when my former student told her that she had yet to sell even one piece, the gallery owner laughed and said to her that she's never shown them her artwork to the right clientele. She said, here's my card. That's when she introduced herself of, you know, what she really uh, wanted to talk to her about is get your portfolio up to date and call my manager here in the New York, since she was in New York, in the New York gallery. And we'll start there. And I want to have a showing of your work in each one of my galleries. New York, I think she started in New York and then went to Miami and then to San Francisco. Isn't that something? It's a great For, example of yeah. combining the two. So so it's it's she wasn't separating it anymore. That's the key is you don't separate your psychic life from your creative life, your creative life from your psychic life. And by extension, any of you who still feel like you're not creative enough, <laughs> but you want to be more psychic, well, it doesn't matter how you use your creativity, everyone is 100% grade A creative. You're, you're already made that way. You're a spiritual being. You're a soul. And, and you're 100% creative. In fact, you're creating all the time, whether you're aware of it or not. You're just creating all the time. Sometimes you create disasters. <laughs> I, yeah, some, some are, uh, people are incredible masters at, at creating disasters. <laughs> hey, disaster masters. <laughs> that sounds like a brand name. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm probably a few of you listening said, oh, that's me. I'm the disaster master. Anyway. Yeah, that can be shifted. Yeah. And. Also, if you if you feel that way, if you feel like, you know, you've created more disasters than you have successes and wonderful things, have hope because it's still your creativity. You know, it's it's anyone who can create uh, something that's destructive or disastrous. That just means they're extra creative. If they turn it around, they just create something absolutely wonderful and beneficial to themselves and others. It's, it's just, what do you create, right? So everyone's creative. And generally, people who create, not necessarily disasters, but things that they don't want, it's, it's because most of it is because they're not aware. They don't own themselves as creative. So in this example, why I, I wanted to share this story with you about this artist and psychic and artist is that as soon as my former student committed to living her psychic life, her creative artist life took off like gangbusters. <laughs> 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 yeah, so... Uh, so and, and she <laughs> succeeded in living both of those aspects of herself in one undivided life. 
That's where the success comes from, is if you divide your life into compartments. In fact, we were just watching some kind of a TV show that, that uh, uh, was uh, about doctors and, you know, the stresses and tra traumatic levels that they have to go through or, or, or lawyers, either, either type of profession. And somebody kept on saying, oh, yeah, I'm compartmentalizing. I'm compartmentalizing you know, so I can handle this you know, emotionally upsetting thing and just still be a professional. A lot of people learn to do that because that's the only way they know how to not be completely wiped out emotionally and mentally and everything. And, but that's not the way to do it. It's the more you divide yourself, the more overwhelming everything gets. And, and then you have to kind of shut that out and shut that out and shut that out. And pretty soon you're, you're kind of uh, anesthetized. You, you become numb to everything. And it's not because, you know, you don't care. It's because you care so much, but you don't know how to deal with all of that energy, all of that, what comes up in you when, when, you know, you feel like I can't do anything about this. I'm powerless. I'm helpless. This person's suffering, and I'm supposed to be a uh, the person to help them. You know, I'm the healer. Oh, but I, I I can't do anything. They they won't. They're they're refusing to to follow instructions. They're they're refusing to change their ways, and nothing's gonna happen unless they do something. Ah, this is this is a tough thing for every healer. Everyone who loves, who cares, who, who's especially sensitive to other people's energies and, and where they're at. And when you start to experience someone else's pain and suffering, and you're aware that it's not your pain and suffering, but it's someone else's, and you, you want to help them, but they're not willing, or they're not ready to, or they just flat out refuse, says, I don't need your help, <laughs> go away. And what are, you, what are you to do? Well, know that as you own your creative life and you own that you are a soul, psychic, you, you can't separate those two things because being psychic is, is being creative. And you can't be creative if you don't realize that creative power comes from within you as the spiritual being that you are, the, the soul, in other words, huh? your psychic self. That's where your creativity lies. So as you start to support and take care of your psychic self and your psychic life, and what, what are you aware of? What, what do you notice? What, what do you experience inside? The world could be, you know, screaming and yelling and demanding and expecting of you all kinds of stuff. But, but what are you going through inside? What are you experiencing inside? What are you aware of? And as you start to take care of that incredible, extraordinary, sensitive awareness that's inside of everyone, then, oh, it's the same space. It's the same place where, where your creativity and your creative power. Creativity means creative power. That's where your power lies. And so when you're 100% creative, 100% of the time, all the time, you're never without power. So you're never helpless. As a healer, healing is extremely creative. And as a healer, you're extremely sensitive to where people are. And as you experience where other people are, and they're not in the best of places, they're, they're having trouble, they're struggling, they're in pain, they're suffering. There's never a moment where you can't create something that's going to help them. Oh, most likely it's not going to cure them of whatever kind of illness they have or whatever. Not necessarily. That's for them to do. But it's definitely going to be moving them in the healing direction, even if the person is just absolutely anti. No, I deserve this. I, I, I'm, I'm the one who's, you know, I'm punishing myself because, because uh, I'm so whatever. 
and there's nothing you can say to convince them otherwise. But uh, you, as the healer, as the aware person, remember, awareness is what changes everything. When you're aware of the truth and you're, you're aware of the lies that the other person is believing in at the time. You might not be able to convince them that those are lies and they shouldn't believe in them. No, but you being aware of the truth, ah, that is going to have an enormous impact on where that person's going to go. So you don't have to be a talented artist in the sense of, you know, you paint beautiful things or you write incredible poetry or you're an amazing singer or whatever it is. You don't have to be a, that kind of a talented artist to live your creative life. Every soul's fully creative and that creativity is intrinsic to the soul. So you can't be alive without being fully creative. The only question for each of us is how we choose to express that inner powerful creativity. We can express who we are in truth creatively, or we can express ourselves as who we're not. Basically, that's the choice we have in our self-expression. We can express who we are truthfully, or we could express pretending to be something else, someone else, somehow else. Ah, yeah. Those are the two choices in self-expression. You'll come to discover that anyone that you find unhappy or arrogant or cruel or destructive to life in any way is someone who's not living life as who they truly are. After all, how can you hope to be happy not being true to who you are? So being aware psychically and using your various innate psychic abilities are essential to living more of your psychic life. Then expressing who you are inside creatively in the world in some way is essential to living your psychic life as well. Going within to access your creative power is fundamental to expressing your creativity in the world. But if you continue to deny your psychic self and create psychic life as a creative person, then you'll never be happy. Just look at the history of some of the great artists who resorted to various substances to deaden their psychic pain they were in. Some couldn't cope with living in this world as who they were. So sooner or later, if you express your creativity a lot in any way, you will have to discover who you are inside in order to continue to express, be happy, healthy, and fulfilled. That takes living your psychic life as your soul self. You can run for a while, but you can't hide mm -hmm. as a creative psychic being. We're coming up on our second break already. So we'd like to let you know that we'll be teaching our next teleclass titled Taking Care of Your Giving, Energy Work to Reset Your Daily Workspace. And this is part of our You Might Be More Psychic Than You Think teleclass series. It's happening on Saturday, October 16th from 10 a.m. to noon Pacific time. You can join us on your phone from anywhere and learn to heal yourself, be more productive, and enjoy your work. We'll provide you with invaluable psychic tools to do energy work to take care of yourself as you give of yourself and express your creativity as you work. For all the details and to sign up, go to our October events calendar section. Can you believe it? It's almost October. Uh, at michaeltamura.com or call our office at 530-926-2650 and speak with our fabulous assistant, Noelle, during normal business hours, specific time, Monday to Friday. We'll return in a couple of minutes to continue with your psychic life and your creative life. We'll be right back. Follow us on Twitter at VoiceAmericaTRN. Get the lowdown on guests, new shows, and your favorites. That's VoiceAmericaTRN. Living the Miracle with Michael and Raphael Tamura. 
Find out more about everything that they offer at michaeltamura.com. And be sure to sign up for their free monthly newsletter. The best book ever. Transformational. Incredible information. One of the best books I've ever read. Inspirational. A must read for anyone interested in accomplishing their purpose. That's what readers around the world are saying about You Are the Answer. The award winning book by Michael J. Tomorrow, beloved spiritual teacher and clairvoyant visionary. Order your copy now at Amazon.com. If you love Living the Miracle with Michael and Raphael Tamora, you'll love their teleclasses, seminars, and retreats. Check out their upcoming events at michaeltamora.com forward slash events. It's your world. Motivate. Change. Succeed. VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com You are listening to Living the Miracle. Michael and Raphael would love to hear from you. Reach the show today by calling 1-888-346-9141. Again, that's 1-888-346-9141. You may also send an email to livingthemiracleradio at gmail.com. Now back to Living the Miracle. Wonderful to have you back. We've been exploring your psychic life and your creative life and the relationship between them and why it takes living one to live the other. So let's continue. Michael was using an example in the first section of this show today about how people with greater means, um, when they're really on their psychic life path, will use their money to share it with others in some way, such as building hospitals and and, uh, other kinds of organizations that support the culture and support people's health and so forth. And I just wanted to say a shout out to any of our friends out there that are of great means. Um, To those of you doing this, using your uh, amazing ability to have that money, create that money, bring it in, and then share it with others. You know, otherwise it ends up being shared with those uh, children and grandchildren that you have. But um, we know a a few who have created some amazing things that help humanity. And I just want to, if any one of them happen to listen to our show, encourage you to continue to do so. Um, that's a real important part of our moving along. You know, the the top one percent get a, a bad rap, and uh, many should in that case. But those that are really here to, you know, try and make changes in the world, you know, I salute you and appreciate you. Now, one of the things that I'm aware of in, uh, you know, w- mixing your psychic life and your creative life, and that is when it comes to daily life situations and we all have them you know those challenges that drop in our lap that bill that shows up that we're not expecting that trip we make off the curb and break our ankle or whatnot Um, of course if you're using your psychic abilities you wouldn't have tripped off of that curb but here it is you have some kind of a problem you know this that's problems are come from our creativity in a sense and they're here to teach us something you know uh, eventually we learn not to create problems at all but when our creativity isn't being directed or or worked with in the way that michael's talked about through this whole show that's what we end up with is problems but if you if your energy has dropped and you're creating problems, you can still use your creativity to solve them. And one of the good questions I like to ask myself when a, a big problem drops in my lap is, is this problem mine? Because if it's not mine, I can't really solve it. You've all had a person who's come to you for money. Please, 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 I need to pay my rent. You give that person money. Uh, feeling sorry for them and everything. And a month later, they're right back with their hand out, right? So creatively and intuitively speaking, if that happens, I, I'll use my intuition to to tune into what would be the best place I can direct this person so that they're not just 
using me for a cash cow, for instance. So, um, and it's also good for their path to know that they just, it, the world doesn't owe them anything. Um, this is a place for all of us to create and wake up. And waking up is what we're doing right now. Yes. I guess the song was breaking up is hard to do, but waking up sometimes is hard to do. <laughs> it's not easy being green. Right? It's not easy being green, yes. And, you know, it's interesting. Just yesterday, we had a couple of our Van students who are doing their, you know, their professionals in their own right. And uh, we we're talking about things, and, and one of them said, yeah, it's, it's a, amazing how your, your life from earlier on in your life has been one of just trusting and, and everything works out. Things happen. You, you didn't know what's going to happen at all, but you just jump into it and do it. And, and I'm looking at that, and, you know, it's, I've always lived my life that way. And underneath it all, it seems that it's always because my first mm, go-to uh, process in everything in life is, oh, yeah, if, if you don't have a solution right away, like, okay, you know, the things you do for a routine, you do it. It's a routine because it always works. You just push this button and that goes and everything's fine, except until it's not. And so when in those instances where where life doesn't go the way you thought it was going to go, you push the button, but nothing happens. <laughs> and we're in re Mercury retrograde now, right? So <laughs> That's happening a lot. It's happening moment. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> or even uh, in the communication department, not technological, but communication, you know, you say something and it, you uh, intend this to be a certain kind of communication, but it gets blown up and and it's completely misinterpreted whatever and wow instead of communication it becomes war and when those things happen oh what do you do well the first thing is you got to remind yourself oh yeah i'm i'm psychic i i i am a soul i'm which means i'm fully creative I may not think of myself as a very creative person most of the time, but no, I am just as creative as anyone anywhere. Huh. So instead of getting stuck on the past, even if the past is just a, a moment ago, uh, why not create something? Oh, in fact, I think next week we have our radio show <laughs> exactly about this, right? Yes. Yeah. Letting, letting go of the past to create your present. So we'll, we'll cover that in detail next week, but, but it's, that's the way I've lived. I go, okay, what do I do about this? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's almost always I start with, I don't know. But I've noticed a lot of people get stuck on I don't know. They, they, they think not knowing is a bad thing. Not knowing is some kind of a failure. Not knowing is some kind of an invalidation. But to me, no, it's not at all. Not knowing is great. Because when you don't know, when you don't have a pat answer, it's like you're given a blank canvas. You can paint anything you want to. You, you get a, a, a lump of clay to mold it into whatever you like it to be. It's, it's a great opportunity. You get a blank uh, word uh, processing screen. You can write anything you want. Oh, so not knowing to me is never an invalidation. It's always an opportunity. It's a place to start. It's a place to start. I, I've been given. It's, I'm grateful for it. I, I appreciate not knowing. Wow, now I've been given a free you know what do you call it? Carte blanche. I, I've been given a creative space to to make up something new, create something different. Then the next step always is, all right. Well, what would I like to create? Hmm. Obviously, when I'm looking at something as somehow problematic in life, 
you know, I'm not happy with this or it's, this isn't working for me or whatever it is. I don't particularly wish to create more of that, <laughs> right? I, I don't want to create more of it not working. Uh, I like to have it work. Uh, you know, I like to have it be uh, fruitful, uh, to be beneficial, to be a uh, positive experience. I'd like to be happy, you know, oh, or I'd like to be at peace. So that's my starting point. Whatever it is, so it's not getting caught up in it's it's about finances or it's about technology or it's about you know some kind of a uh, relationship thing or the neighbor's dog barking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't get caught up in the the specific detail that that's upsetting you or or making you unhappy or whatever. But but to, oh, what's the overall? Oh yeah, if it's the dog barking. What's so bad about that? Oh, I'm upset that the dog's barking. I don't like it. Uh, I don't. I want to sleep, or I want to meditate, or I want to, you know, uh, have peace and quiet in the house. And with that dog barking, I can't do that. You know, I can't concentrate. Ah, like that. Then, oh, that's the problem. It's not the dog barking that's the problem, is it? <laughs> so we reset ourselves to say, okay, this is. This is what this is what I'm experiencing now and this is what I'd rather experience. Oh. What's what's great about that? It's my experience. <laughs> right? No one else can create your experience for you. Huh? Really, all of you I'm sure probably knows that yeah, no one else can make you happy. And the same goes for the opposite. No one else could make you unhappy because happiness and unhappiness, it's just an experience we have, it's a right? It's, it's inside of us. It's not a, out there in the world. It's not in somebody else. It's in, in myself. I, I'm going, I'm happy or I'm not. <laughs> so, okay, I'm happy. So I'm, I'm happy that I'm happy. <laughs> Most of us won't have a problem with that. But ah, uh, where do most of us have a problem is when we're not happy, then we get unhappy about being unhappy <laughs> instead of, oh, I'm unhappy. All right. Would I like to stay here or would I like to change that? Would I like to be happy instead? Okay. It starts with me. So that's that starts with me means I get to create it. Huh. I get to create something different than what I've created before. Oh, how about that? So think about that. Next time you are, you know, frustrated, unhappy, or or struggling with something and everything, just just oh yeah, remind yourself that. You are a fully creative being. You're a psychic being that's really creative. Take care of your awareness, you know, your don't ignore it. Inner inner awareness and know that you can create and change anything. You can create a new experience for yourself. Yeah, you don't have to stay with the same old same old. <laughs> Right. Well, we've come to the end of our show once again. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love having you with us. We hope that you enjoyed the show and that it inspired you to live your psychic life and your creative life more fully. Remember using your psychic abilities to tap into creative answers. Make sure to catch us again next Wednesday and we'll explore the all-important topic that Michael just mentioned a little bit ago of Letting go of the path, past, letting go of the past to create your present. Since you won't be able to create what you'd like in your present if you don't let go of your past, learn what you might have to let go of in your past and how you can do that. Remember, too, our special remote Zoom retreat seminar event on October 9th through October 11th, taught in English with immediate translation into German, hosted by Forum im Licht by in Zurich, Switzerland. Learn about being 
on the path of awakening, your compassion, clairvoyance, and creative expression. Find out all the details in German and to sign up online at Forum im Licht website www.imlicht.ch or contact Wolfgang Jaeger in German or English at forum at imlicht.ch. You can also check our website October events calendar at michaeltamora.com to get details in English. Until then, be inspired, use your imagination, and follow your intuition joyfully. This is Living the Miracle with Michael and Raphael Tamura. We will see you next week. We appreciate your joining us today. Living the Miracle with Michael and Raphael Tamura can be heard live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time and 11 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. Until we talk again next week, remember to wake up to who you are. It's your purpose here on Earth.